Hello class, this is section 7.4 and in this video we will learn how to take inverse Laplace transforms of logs. There's nothing in our formula sheet that allows us to take inverse transforms of logs so we have to change this to a different problem before we proceed. Now the thing to note is that we are really good at taking inverse Laplace transforms of fractions. We've done a lot of fractions already. We want to change our problem of logs to a problem about fractions. So there are two ways to do that. You can either take the exponential of a log to get a fraction, but there's nothing in a formula sheet that allows us to take exponentials of uh, terms, so we have to do something else instead. And this is where we use our, for our differentiation and integration formulas. Key fact here is this property of logs, the derivative of a log, well, let's call this um, gs, is equal to g prime of s over gs. This is a property that you should have learned in calculus, might have been a long time ago, but this is really useful because it means that taking a derivative will change a log into a fraction. So let's try, let's do that. So we don't know how to solve this problem, but let's try to solve a similar but easier problem instead and we'll see what we, what we can do for that. This is a strategy that we'll use for a lot of these inverse Laplace transform problems. So the idea is to solve this instead. Laplace inverse of derivative of log s squared plus 1 over s squared plus 4. So this isn't, obviously isn't going to give us the same answer as the previous, as the, as the proper question, but we hope that we can modify our solution to get the original problem back. So anyway, we're going to solve a modified problem. The first thing to do is to note that we can use the properties of a log. So this just becomes inverse Laplace transform of the derivative of log s squared plus 1 minus log s squared plus 4. Right, because log a over b is equal to log a minus log b, which is uh, one of the first things you learn about logs, that they have this property. And again, um, the log of, uh, the derivative of a log is just the function, um, the function is derivative over the function itself. So derivative of log s squared plus 1 is going to be something over s squared plus 1, and you take the derivative of the top, so it becomes 2s over s squared plus 1. And the derivative of log s squared plus 4, you have s squared plus 4 in the bottom. And you take the derivative on top, so the derivative of s squared plus 4 is 2s. So that's just what we have. So the so derivative of log s squared plus 1 over s squared plus 4 is just this, 2s over s squared plus 1 minus 2s over s squared plus 4. So we have to take this inverse Laplace transform, but both of these are really easy. And you can look at your formula sheet to deduce that the inverse Laplace transform of 2s over s squared plus 1 is simply 2 cosine t. And the inverse Laplace transform of 2s over s squared plus 4 is simply 2 cosine 2t, because 4 is 2 squared. Remember that. So again, we have so we solved this easier problem. We've solved the fact the derivative of log s squared plus one over s squared plus four. But remember, that wasn't our original problem. We instead want to find the inverse Laplace transform of log s squared plus one over s squared plus four. So we need to eliminate the derivative. So how do you eliminate derivatives? Well, we have to use the integral formula because remember. According to the fundamental theorem of calculus, integration cancels out derivatives. So I've written down here the integration formula that should be similar to what you have on your sheet. So we have to use this. Um, you need to use this integration thing to get rid of this derivative over here. Let's do that. What this formula says is that the Laplace inverse transform of the integral so we use this integral and we integrate this term, derivative of uh, log s squared plus 1 over s squared plus 4. So um, remember we have to change all the d's to sigmas here, so it's a sigma d log 
sigma squared plus 1 over sigma squared plus 4. Taking the derivative, uh, taking the integral, integral is equivalent to changing the right hand side, and this is our right hand side here. Changing that right hand side to the same thing but over t. So we have 2 cosine t minus 2 cosine 2t over t. So I hope you can see how to read that from the formula in the formula sheet. So integrating the s's is the same thing as dividing by t on the on the t side. So integrating on the s side is the same as dividing by t on the t side. So this is what we did. So remember that the boundaries matter. Um, we, have, we are taking the boundary from s to infinity. And remember to change all the s's that you're integrating into sigmas. Right? That's, a, that's an important notational thing that students often forget. And I forgot the d sigma over here, so there should be a d sigma over there. All right, so we're integrating that in terms of sigma. Now let me do that properly. Um, to d sigma. Okay, great. So let's do that. And let's figure out how to simplify this left hand side. So remember, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, integration and derivatives cancel. So the d ds and the d sigma over here cancel out. What we're left with, so the integration cancels, but what we're still left with the boundaries. We still have s and infinity there, and you can't forget that. So once we have the integration and the derivative cancel out, we're left with the sigma to infinity. So we just have um, limit sigma to infinity log sigma squared plus 1 over sigma squared plus 4, right? because there's the infinity term here, minus plugging in s. We plug in s for the sigma, minus log s squared plus 1 over s squared plus 4. So that's what happened on the left hand side. I hope you understand how this is a simple application of the fundamental theorem calculus. So the derivative and the integration cancels out. But we still had to worry about the boundary values, the infinity and the s. So this is what happens here. The left hand side, of course, it stays at normal. So we have 2 cosine t minus 2 cosine 2t over t. All right. So let's figure out how to, do, how to deal with this uh, limit over here. So this goes to infinity. The numerator goes to infinity. And the denominator goes to infinity. So we have to use L'Hopital's rule here. By L'Hopital's rule, um, let's just let's just uh, simp simplify that. Let me, let's just clarify that in a little corner over here, right? So the limit of sigma goes to infinity of uh, sigma squared plus one over sigma squared plus four. By L'Hopital's rule, we just have to differentiate the top and bottom. So we get two s over two s. S is cancel, of course, and the limit is just one. All right, so the limit of s sigma squared plus 1, sigma squared plus 4, when sigma goes to infinity is 1. And therefore, if we take the logs of both sides, log sigma squared plus 1 over sigma squared plus 4, this just becomes log of 1, which is 0. So in fact, this entire term is 0. It goes to 0. And what we're left with is Laplace inverse transform of minus log s squared plus 1 over s squared plus 4. And that's just going to be 2 cosine t minus 2 cosine 2t over t. So we're almost there. We're almost there. So we have the inverse Laplace transform of minus log s squared plus 1 over s squared plus 4. And what we want is the log of s squared plus 1 over s squared plus 4. So we just need to eliminate the minus sign. We move the minus sign to the other side log of s squared plus 1 over s squared plus 4 equals minus 2 cosine t minus 2 cosine 2t. Two now let's clarify that this is minus the whole fraction, minus the whole fraction over t. All right. So this will be our final solution. It's really not that difficult. Remember that whenever you see a log, the only way to deal with it is by taking the derivative and then using the integration formula to eliminate the derivative to go back to the original problem.